Hey everyone, it's Zinnia here, and today I wanted to show you how to make a platformer in Scratch. By the end of this series, you'll be able to make your own game like this one with a moving character, gravity, areas the player has to avoid, multiple levels, and more. So let's get started. In this first video in the series, I will show you how to make the character move around and jump with gravity. So in previous games that I've made, we've usually done movement with something like this, where when you press an arrow key, the character moves a set amount in that direction. And to get that smooth movement that platformers have, the way we'll think about movement in this game is when you press an arrow key, the player gets a speed boost in that direction, and then that speed boost sort of wears off. So to start making the character move, I will drag out a forever block, and I will make the character forever change x by one. So this makes it forever, like every tick of the game that passes by, it moves this way by one step. And I can control how fast the player moves by changing this number. So if I set it to zero, then it doesn't move at all. And, you know, one was making it move sort of slowly, uh, three would make it move faster, and, you know, 10 would make it move extremely fast. And how about instead of me typing different numbers here to change the speed, I let the player increase this number. So to do that, I will make a variable and put it in here, and I'll let the player increase that variable when they press the right arrow key. So I will make a variable and call it x speed, and I'll say if the right arrow is pressed, then I will change x speed by one. So when the player presses the right arrow, they get to increase the x speed. So I'll put this inside the forever loop. So it's forever checking, okay, is the right arrow pressed? And if so, it will increase the x speed. So let's try it out. And I am pressing the right arrow and x speed is increasing, uh, but the character still isn't moving. And that is because it still says, you know, change x by zero, no matter what x speed is. So what I can do is I can drag x speed, this little circular or the, this little oval that just takes the value of this variable and puts it in here. So now when I press the right arrow key, it increases x speed and the player moves by that amount. So right now we can go this direction, but not the other one. So let's fix that. I will say if the left arrow is pressed, then I will change x speed by negative one. And I'll just put this right under here. So first it'll check the right arrow, then it'll check the left arrow. And let's try that out. So, whoa, whoops, okay. When I press the right arrow, I can make it go faster this way. And when I press the left arrow, I can make it go faster this way. And I can just go back and forth, pressing them over and over again and moving my character around. And as you can see, we are getting to that uh, platformer movement. Now, a problem you might notice is once you start going in one direction, you have to then go the other one or you go extremely fast. So let's make it so that your speed is also always naturally decreasing a little bit. So we can do that by using the set x speed block. And in the operators category, I will drag out this multiplication block and I will set x speed to x speed times something less than one. Like I'm gonna do 0.9. And the way that works is any number times 0.9 is gonna go a little bit more towards zero. So x speed is five right now. And if I set x speed to x speed times 0.9, it goes down towards zero a little bit. It decreased to 4.5. And if I keep doing that, okay, it went to 4.05, it keeps going down. And so gradually, as I keep doing this, it goes and goes and goes until it's, okay, I'm clicking this a lot, but it will eventually get pretty close to zero. And what's handy about this is this also works if x is negative. So here, let's say, here, I'm gonna press the left arrow key a lot. Okay, x is a negative number. And if I do this block, I multiply x by 0.9, then that makes x be a negative number that's actually closer to zero. So it's going to, it's now it's just negative seven, negative six, it goes down and down and down towards zero. So I will put this block right above the change x block so that the character can move right and left depending on what keys the person is pressing. And then no matter what, the X speed decreases a little bit. And so let's try that out. So now I will press the right arrow a lot and that makes me move right, but eventually my speed goes back down to zero and I can go left, 
but eventually it goes down right, left, and now we really have that nice smooth platformer movement. And this, where we're decreasing the X, is sort of giving the impression of friction, like there's resistance on the ground. Like you can't just move and move and move forever. And you know, you could try putting in different numbers in here and see what happens. You know, if you put it at like 0.6, it's really, really hard to move the character. It The speed goes down to zero really quickly. If you had it at 0.95, then, you know, it's more zoomy, it's like zooming around, but it'll still eventually go back to zero. So we've got our character moving left and right. Now let's add gravity. And one thing I'm going to do to organize my code is I'm going to go to my blocks and just make a block. And I'm gonna just call this move left and right. So I'm just going to take this code and put this under move left and right. And so now that is what the move left and right block does. So whenever this block appears in the code, the character will just do whatever code is here. And you can use my blocks in lots of different ways, but here I'm just using it to keep the code clean and separated. So now I can, you know, add some code under here, but it's clear that this part of the code is just the move left and right part. Now to make the character move up and down, I will create a variable and call it y speed just the same as we did with the x speed variable. One thing you might notice is I just changed the name of the x speed variable to have this little left and right icon at the beginning. It's just for decoration, it just helps me tell the variables apart. And then to make the character be able to jump, how about we say if the up arrow key is pressed, then set y speed to something really high like 10. So let's test that out if I click the green flag, and then if I click the up arrow, it does make the Y speed go to 10. Um, and to make the character actually move when the Y speed goes up, let's get a motion block and say, after it checks if the up arrow key is pressed, then let's change Y by Y speed, whatever that is. So let's try that out. I'll click the green flag again. And then now when I press the up arrow key, uh, the character goes up. But uh, they do say what goes up must come down. So let's uh, add some gravity. And to do that, well, we can just change Y speed by some negative number. So if I put in negative one, now Y speed is going down every second. And there you see, even if we jump upward, gravity eventually pulls the character down. We have this block that every tick of the game decreases the Y speed a little bit. And so like gravity, the character is going down more and more every second. And you can experiment around by putting different numbers in here. Personally, I found that negative 0.7 works pretty well. Now, you might notice a couple of issues with this, especially the fact that, you know, we just fall right through the ground and also the fact that we can just jump even if there's nothing to jump on. Um, and I will show you how to fix both of those things and more in part two of this series where I'll show how to add collision with the ground and platforms. So I hope this helps get started with your platformer and I'll see you next time. And scratch on.